this is the way the compound slide moves on my 10 by 18 import lathe. Uh, what's not shown, I guess, is the the nut on here that's still in the lathe. But these are most of the parts that make up the assembly. There's this casting that the lead screw slot um, runs in. There's your your feed dial. Uh, there's sort of the this isn't a nut. This is like a collar that, um, as you'll see in a minute, also acts as a bearing surface. And then there's a lock nut. There's actually one more of these. There's two of them sort of back to back. There's a spring and there's a key that goes in this um, collar here. So basically the way this works is you, you put this all together, you put this collar on, you set the nut and the nut sets the the tension. So if you tighten this all the way down, it's not going to move because this presses against this surface and then that pinches here and it becomes super stiff. So you back it off a little bit so that it actually does rotate. Uh, that introduces play into the into the system. Um, they did it this way because it's cheap. I've seen um, other import lathes. Uh, I think uh, Stefan Goldsvenser is probably the best um, or most popular example on YouTube of his lathe that shows basically um, two thrust washers that he previously used. Then he went on and implemented a much better system that uses uh, angular contact bearings. Uh, that's sort of the, I would consider that top drawer, uh, typical of, of, of Stefan, um, the, the top drawer solution. I uh, don't really want to extend the lead screw out. Um, this isn't my main lathe anymore. I'm using the standard modern uh, the most. Um, but I am keeping this around because it can cut metric threads and there's a few things that it does that are slightly better than the standard modern. I just say slightly, uh, but I, I won't get much for it if I sell it. So, I, but not, And for me to get metric change gears for the standard modern will cost uh, a significant amount of money. So I'm going to keep it around for uh, single point threading. Um, but I, I want to fix this because this has been driving me bananas. So. What I'll do is I'm going to design this up in Fusion and incorporate, probably I'm going to incorporate a um, deep groove ball bearing and I'm going to put a thrust washer in and then there's going to be a nut and then I'm going to preload the deep groove ball bearing and the thrust washer. Uh, the biggest downside to this is deep groove ball bearings, although they can take axial load, you have to be really careful that you don't overload them axially. Uh, they're, they're more designed for radial loads, but you can load them axially. Um, deep, that's the deep groove portion of ball bearings. Uh, the deep groove allows you to apply axial loads to it. So I'm going to do that because I think I can fit that all into this assembly without having to extend out the lead screw. And hopefully that'll be a much smoother assembly that's um, more of a joy to use. So let's sort of get to work on that. A standard 6900 2RS ball bearing was the start of this modification. The lead screw needed a small section turned down to 10mm for this. After cutting down the existing plane bearing support, a new housing was machined to hold the ball bearing on the back side and a 10mm thrust bearing on the front side. The housing was doweled to the existing bearing support to ensure proper location. There is enough room to use proper hardened washers with the thrust bearing. The existing collar, dial, and nuts were used. Care must be taken upon assembly to ensure that you don't overload the ball bearing. Tightening the nuts too much will induce too much preload, significantly reducing bearing life. The good news is, even good quality bearings in this size are very reasonable. So now let's take a look and see how I made it.
Well, that works a lot better. Thanks for watching. See you next time.